people paid, you know, $10,000 to fly in and learn about this. So I'm going to try to kind of consolidate this for everybody listening. Welcome to the Active Marketer Podcast, where we talk about how to design, automate, and scale your business to the next level using sales and marketing automation. You can find out all the tips, tactics, and techniques you need to get more customers and sell more stuff over at theactivemarketer.com. Now, here's your host, Barry Moore. Welcome to the Active Marketer, the podcast that's all about sales, funnels, and marketing automation. I am your host, Barry Moore, and this week we've got the second half of our interview with sales funnel rock star Todd Brown. If you haven't listened to the first half yet, I'd urge you to go back and uh, download episode number 38. Some great tips, tactics, and techniques that you can use in your sales funnels in that episode. In this episode, we're going to continue on uh, with a completely kind of different topic, and that's the big idea. So I won't take up any more of the time. Let's dive straight into part two of our interview with Todd Brown. All right, so we've got our level of sophistication. What what do we do next? So to keep things real simple, the very next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to develop a big idea for my funnel. And this is a topic that, you know, I, I held a two day event down here in West Palm Beach, Florida, just about this topic alone. People paid, you know, $10,000 to fly in and learn about this. So I'm going to try to kind of consolidate this into a, a, a three minute snippet for everybody listening. But the thing that I, I, I want everybody to understand is that, is that, you know, th- number one, there's a difference between marketing and selling. Right. Most people confuse the two. Most people conflate the two. Most people think it, they're 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 the same activity or same actions with the same objective and outcome. Well, the reality is that they are two vastly different things, two vastly different activities with two vastly different objectives or desirable outcomes. And the job of marketing is to make selling unnecessary, to make it superfluous, as Peter Drucker said, to make it to make it easy, to make it smooth, to make it a natural extension of everything that you've said. And so I share that in this context because I'll, I'll just tell you that 75%, uh, give or take, of every marketing funnel that we create, help, you know, create for clients, you know, help students create 75%, regardless of how long the funnel is, regardless of what the funnel looks like in terms of the funnel model, 75% is marketing. We're not talking about the product. We're not talking about the features. We're not talking about the advantages, the benefits, the price point, the premiums, the bonuses, the risk reversal. We're not talking about the urgency, scarcity, giving testimonials about the product, me, the company, none of that. 75% is all about the prospect, their situation, their fears, their concerns, their desire, the best solution for their needs, the information that they need to know and understand and absorb to be able to see the perfect solution and the perfect action for them to take, which of course is behind the scenes ultimately going to be to take advantage of the thing that I offer them in the other 25% of the funnel, which is the sales portion. I say all of that to stress the point that we need an idea that that 75% of our marketing funnel is going to fall under. In other words, I need to come up with a big idea, a compelling, arresting, intellectually interesting, emotionally stimulating, easily understandable idea that prospects have never heard before. Right. I can't simply regurgitate the same idea that everybody else is saying, because when that happens, you create mental opt out, meaning prospects come to your funnel. They come to your opt in page your squeeze page and they say, oh, I've seen that before. Oh, heard that. Oh, that again. Oh, more of that. Oh, I've seen that on YouTube or, oh, I heard so and so talk about that. And they bail. Right. They bounce. Yeah. And so we need something that we can say. We need an idea. This is before you write a single word of copy. Right. See, understand that the headline is not the idea. The headline simply communicates the idea, right? But it's the underlying idea behind the headline that I'm going to develop into a big, startling, arresting, unique, timely, fresh, easily understandable idea that is both intellectually interesting and emotionally compelling. Once I have that idea developed, and that idea comes from 
diving deep into the product, the, 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 um, you know, the, 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 um, the, let's say if it's an information product, if it's a book going into the book and, and digging, doing research, you know, like, um, finishing up a funnel for a, a client that works with a certain type of attorneys and these attorneys practice a certain type of law. And so I was able to do a bunch of research and have research done on this particular area of the law. And from there, I, w- I even found other little tidbits that I was able to kind of explore that all gave me fodder, that, that gave me information to pull from to develop a big idea that I was then going to use to build the rest of the funnel so that I had something that would capture their attention. And the the... The perfect example of this and, and, and the place to kind of see this in action every day is with a company like Agora. Mm-hmm. Agora is a, right, a half a billion dollar a year information marketing leviathan, right? A beast of a company, man. Yeah, absolutely. Um, right? Like, um, and they really sell, you know, investing newsletters and alternative health newsletters, right? The bulk is investing newsletters, how to, how to you know, how to invest in the stock market um, and, and, you know, build your retirement and, and that sort of thing. Well, if you look, you know, why aren't, why don't Agora, why don't most of their funnels, their promotions, their campaign simply say, simply have headlines that say things like how to get rich in the stock market or how to double your, you know, how to, how to double your retirement account or, or how to fund your retirement account with dividend stocks, right? Or how to, you know, how to day trade your way to wealth. Why don't they say those sort of things? Well, they don't say those sort of things because the, the market's too sophisticated for that. Yeah, everyone's right. And it. so they need a, a unique way to capture their attention, to create interest, to captivate their prospects intellectually. Uh, um, and so they have big idea based campaigns, right? They're, it's the end of America. It's the, the new railroad. It's the, the new internet, internet. It's Obama's third term. It's Obama's mistress. It's um, all of these, you know, these, the underground currency, um, it's all of these things that are, they're, they're, all they are, are ideas that are used to captivate the market's attention, generate interest, right? To ultimately lead them in to a marketing message where by the time that marketing message is delivered, they are sold on needing the information or wanting the information at which point they go into the selling portion of their marketing campaign or their, their, uh, you know, their marketing promotion. And I think that that's, I, you know, it's, it's a big, somewhat lofty topic, you know, this idea of marketing versus selling, but it's one of those areas that I think, man, I think the majority of marketers personally, especially online that have come through the, the internet marketing world, they don't, they just miss it. They don't get the fact that, Right. Like, you, you know, there are lots of salespeople that are terrible marketers, lots of great marketers that are terrible salespeople. They are two vastly different activities. You can sell a lot with you can sell a lot comfortably with great marketing shops, but with poor marketing shops, it's a lot more difficult to sell um, a lot because you're, you know, you're not creating the desire. You're not setting the frame. You're not uh, establishing the beliefs in the mind of the, um, the, the prospect. And I believe I'll just, I'll, I'll leave it at this. Cause I know we're running short on time It that, you know, it's in my opinion, and this is one of the things I teach. I talk about this often, you know, my kind of thesis, if you will, for designing high conversion marketing funnels is that that 75% of the marketing funnel, that, that first 75% is more akin to being a prosecutor trying to prove a case to a jury before asking them, you know, before giving your closing arguments and asking them to, um, to make a decision. Uh, it's more akin to that than it is, uh, to being a slick salesperson, right? Right. Because it's not, it's not, you know, the salesmanship comes in the end and you don't need a whole lot of salesmanship when you've got tremendous marketing chops. It's why my 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 good buddy Rich Sheffern always says, I'm a you know, he's about himself. He always says, I'm I'm a terrible salesperson. I'm I don't I'm not a salesperson, he says. I'm a marketer. 
right? If, if I, if it was about selling, I would be in trouble, but it's not, it's about marketing and marketing does the heavy lifting for me so that when it comes to selling, all I have to do is make a great offer. All right, That's well, it. That leads into an interesting part. So what do you think are, are some of the best resources if for someone who wants to really dive deep and become a good marketer? Um, that's a great question, man. What are some of the, the, um, the best resources, resources in terms of where can they learn yeah, more? Exactly. I want to, I want to learn to be a great marketer. What's, you know, where do I go? How do I do that? Yeah. Well, so first let me give the self-serving answer. You, you come <laughs> over to, you know, you come over to marketing funnel automation.com at a bare minimum, you go through our blog and you, yeah. you know, you subscribe to our email list and you read our content. Um, you know, that, that would be the best thing. But again, I'm a little biased there. So um, no, it's great material. I've been been through heaps of it. Yeah. And so let me give you some some other resources. One, I mentioned a book earlier that I feel is is required reading every year, um, not just once, but every year. And that's Breakthrough Advertising by Gene Schwartz. Um, I also think another great book by my buddy and mentor, Mark Ford, um, is a book called Great Leads. It's another fantastic book. It's more about copywriting and creating the, you know, the first call it 800 words, let's say of a VSL or a long form sales letter or any marketing promotion, but it, it gives you some of the key strategies used by Agor to create, uh, you know, the, the success that they have. The other thing, um, th there are two other things that are going to sound so bizarre that you've probably never heard anybody recommend before for marketers, but I think um, it's two areas of study that have served me and my clients extraordinarily well, and it can do the same for your audience. The first one is um, study rhetoric, right? Rhetoric is, you know, is how we structure what it is that we say, right? It, it's not what you say, right? We've always heard this, you know, it's not what you say, it's how you say it. That's rhetoric, right? right? Rhetoric is, is what you say. There's a great book. I'll, I'll, let me pull up a great book. It's a book that you would never think would be um, would be a a valuable book. It's designed for students, but it's one of my favorite books. That uh, truly, when it comes to writing and rhetoric, it's called Rhetorical Devices: A Handbook and Activities for Student Writers. Right, a great book. It's like a nine dollar little book. It's it's for studying and learning rhetoric. Great, great first book to go through. You'll go through it dozens of times. I mean, it, and it, and again, you'll you know, rhetoric is is used. Most people don't know what rhetoric is, and they don't realize that it's not this dated old you know Greek skill set. Um, it's used by the greatest communicators, right? It's so it's it's choosing what you want to say and then using rhetoric to understand how to deliver it. The second area that I recommend everybody study. And there's, a, a, you know, a, a small handful of books that you can use is argumentation, how to design and put together a cogent, irrefutable argument, right? So that logically you can't dispute what it is that, uh, that's being presented. Meaning like what a lot of marketers think, um, is, is, um, what a lot of marketers think is a great marketing funnel is simply making a bunch of uh, a bunch of claims, right? One claim after another, like, hey, you can experience this benefit and this benefit and this benefit and this benefit and this benefit. And they think that that's a marketing funnel. Well, the reality is that anybody can make a string of claims. It doesn't take a great marketer to make a string of claims. Um, but, you know, what we do is during that marketing portion, um, we're presenting a case right? We're presenting an argument. We're presenting a thesis and getting them to buy into the, to our thesis, right? P real persuasion is when somebody has a change of heart, a change of feeling, and a change of perspective, right? Change of belief, change of mindset. Yeah, and good. so, right? And so that comes about by being able to present a rock solid, uh, a rock solid argument. And, um, you know, and, and so argumentation, you can study uh, like uh, Jerry Spence, He's like one of the winningest trial attorneys. He uh, 
He's got, um, let me, let me make sure I give you the right, uh, on my bookshelf, I've got, uh, win your case and how to argue and win every time. Those are both good books from, uh, from Jerry Spence. And there's another book. Um, let me just see something here that I actually bought uh, a copy for all of the folks that uh, flew in were were in attendance for my big idea boot camp. It's called uh, it's a small also like a six dollar Kindle ten dollar paperback. It's called A Rule Book for Arguments by Anthony Weston. Ironically, it's also really designed for students, but it'll help you to understand what is a logical argument and what is an illogical argument and the key components of a um, of a solid concrete argument. And that's really what you're, you're doing in a real marketing funnel. See, here's the thing, right? Barry, that most marketers, when they make claim after claim, after claim, after claim, after claim, what they're doing is number one, right? They're, they're expecting the prospect to simply believe them because they've said it. Yeah, exactly. Right. Like they've just, because I said it, I believe the prospect is going to believe me when the reality is that couldn't be further from the truth. Most prospects are going to doubt everything that you say because people are more skeptical, uh, uh, more um, cynical uh, than ever before because uh, they hear about people being burned left and right because of the internet and blah, blah, blah. Right. And so the, um, the second thing is that they're not providing that logical, rational justification. They're leaving out a key component of the um, of the persuasion element. And all they're strictly trying to do is move the person emotionally. Well, when you do that and all you are relying on is claim after claim after claim after claim, that's when your marketing feels like marketing. Yeah, that's when your marketing exactly right. feels like salesmanship. It feels like ah, because you're expecting the prospect to put aside all of their doubt and skepticism, right? And simply to operate operate on hope, right? Whereas when we present an argument, right, that like where they can't refute it and we get them emotional and they're even more emotional because intellectually, logically, rationally, they, they get it. They see that what you're saying is true and legitimate and credible and, and spot on. Um, then emotionally they allow themselves to, to get sucked in because they, they logically believe it. And that's when you truly have a persuasive message. Yeah, and an argument, which you know, has a bit of a negative connotation to it. But what it really is is, you know, a conversation. Whereas the, all those bullet points of benefits are just kind of feels like you're getting hit over the head with a hammer. Doink, 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 doink. You're like, okay, 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 okay. But like with a persuasive argument, it's more of a conversation, and you're engaging the person. You're as me as a lead. You're engaging me in a conversation as to why it's better instead of just belching out bullet points about that it's better. Yeah, exactly. And I, and I think that it, it also, it goes, you know, it, it, it goes beyond, um, um, it goes beyond just like simple, simply just offering proof. Proof is a huge part of, of the, the argument process, um, or, you know, when constructing an, uh, an argument, but like, it's funny, I just pulled it up just for the heck of it. You know, you're absolutely right. Most people do think of an argument or the word argument as, you know, like this, you know, verbal, uh, squabble, this verbal fight. Kind of thing, yeah. yeah. Like, but you know, here's a, you know, here, there, there are two definitions that I pulled up. One says a reason or set of reasons given with the aim of persuading others that an action or idea is right or wrong. In our case, it's a reason. It's really our, our marketing funnel is a set of reasons right? Given with the aim of persuading our prospects that the action that we're about to ask them to take is right. Yeah. That's what we're doing. Right. And the first, um, uh, definition just said an exchange of diverging or opposite, um, views. Right. And so it's kind of like, look, if, if you said to me, Hey, Todd, you know, I believe you should be following a vegetarian diet. Right. Well, I'm going to ask you, well, why tell me why? Right. Like, um, and if you really want to persuade me to the value and benefit of a vegetarian diet, you're going to present an argument, 
right? Anything that you say after I say, tell me why, that is an argument. Whether you realize it or not, whether you design it effectively or not, whether you present it effectively or not, it's an argument. It could be a weak argument. It could be an inefficient argument. It could be an argument with a ton of holes in it. It could be an argument that um, has all kinds of, of, of gaps, or it could be a rock solid, irrefutable, indisputable argument that naturally leads me to the conclusion, dang, you are right. I better start following a vegetarian diet, at which point I hope you sell me on your kit to get started with a vegetarian diet. Yeah, very cool. Makes sense? Very cool. Absolutely. Uh, all right, Todd, just to close things off quickly, maybe just a few common errors that you see every time that kind of make your face palm and just say, oh, please stop doing that. Yeah, I, I think um, one we just said, which is not, you know, making claims that are not backed by proof, you know, where recognizing that, like, if you make one claim and you don't back it up with proof, you allow your prospect to say, yeah, right. Yeah. And if they say, yeah, right, to one thing, you've just allowed doubt to creep into your um, your entire entire message. So, right, not proving all of your claims or simply, I should say, making claims that you don't have proof um, to back up. That's one. Another one is, is thinking that good copy feels or reads like good copy, right? Like in other words, you know, good copy doesn't read like good copy or what most people consider good copy, right? Good copy isn't loaded with or filled with adjectives, right? That's the sign of mediocre copy. Like, right. It's the amazing, fantastic steroid, like tomato growing machine, right? That that's just, that's weak copy, right? Weak copy is adjective driven copy strong copy is doesn't read like that it doesn't feel like that it doesn't sound like copy and it's driven by verbs right and it's it is it's choosing the right most powerful verbs and when you when you utilize verbs right that's that gives your copy punch that gives your copy movement that gives your copy power right and so being selective and intentional about choosing the best, most, uh, um, you know, most impactful, most powerful verb that you can. The next one I would say is not spending, and this is in no particular order, not spending nearly enough time engineering and putting together a truly irresistible over the top superior offer. Right. You know, most marketers, especially in the Internet marketing community, they're lucky to spend 30 minutes crafting the 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 offer. Uh, most, I would say, are, you know, they don't invest more than 15 minutes thinking about brainstorming, engineering the the offer. Yet the offer is more important than the copy. Right. It goes list, offer, copy list. Who you're talking to is the most important. Second, most important, important is the offer. Right. Like the, the different offer can can radically change your your conversions. Right. We could take the same exact copy, the same exact product. Right. The same exact um, target audience. Uh, we could take the offer and instead of, you know, the same price point and instead of being a hard offer, meaning pay today, we could make it a soft offer where pay nothing today. You get the product, use it. And only if you love it in 30 days, do you pay the the 39 or, or, or 49 dollars that one little change in the offer not the copy not the paragraph you know not one of your subheads not the call to action not the ps right that one change can double triple conversions whereas more you know lots and lots of marketers they will invest you know days and days if not weeks and weeks working on the nitty gritty um um copy of their VSL, a paragraph on page four of the VSL, but they spent 12 minutes on the offer. That right. is just a, a, you know, a, um, a massive mistake. Another one is, um, man, and I could rattle, I could keep rattling. <laughs> uh, I'll give you, I'll give you one more. Um, another mistake that I see is this is a little bit, you know, somewhat, um, um, advanced. I'll give you two more. Okay. okay. One is, um, they use, Hi, they use uh, hyperbole in their copy 
um, which is a rhetorical device. Uh, you'll, you can read about it in any book on rhetoric, but you'll read about it in that book I mentioned. And the problem is, though, that they use hyperbole in a way where the prospect doesn't realize or doesn't know. It's not clear that the, that the marketer is trying to, to be hyperbolic, it, and it sounds like they're making just a ridiculous claim, right? So, in other words, hi, hyperbole used correctly is when you say something that um, you say something for effect, meaning like there, there were more people at, like if I said something like there were more people at the concert than there were, than there are grains of sand on the East coast of the United States. Right. Well, you know, like that's a, that's clearly hyperbole. Nobody thinks that I am really, truly trying to convince them that legitimately there were more people there than yeah. there were grains of sand. Right? Right, right. That's clearly. But when you say things like, you know, people will flood your store, you know, or, or your store will be flooded with that is, you know, like it's not clear that you're being hyperbolic there. Right. And, and, and it's not clear that you're using hyperbole. And so to prospects that comes across as simple hype. Yeah, that's all it is. Right. And there's sure. a huge difference. Right. There's a huge difference between hyperbole and and hype. The big difference is that your audience knows when you're being when it's hyperbole and it's simply intended for effect. And that's it. Um, whereas lots of marketers make the mistake of, you know, they'll they'll say things that just make them look like all they're doing is exaggerating. All they're doing is, you know, it looks to the prospect like all they're doing is trying to talk up how great their product is. The last one um, is uh, more of a bigger picture thing, and it is marketers th that think that the answer is more in the marketing funnel model um, instead of realizing that the answer, if they're struggling with conversions, is in the quality of the idea behind their funnel and the design of their marketing funnel message, right? You get a lot of people that think, oh, you know, oh, I, I, I couldn't convert. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not converting in a tripwire funnel. And so let me change it from a tripwire funnel to an evergreen webinar funnel. Let me change it from an evergreen webinar funnel to a survey funnel. Right. Let me change it from a survey funnel to an invisible funnel to a to a, you know, uh, uh, whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they think that that's the answer. Like they bring the same, you know, the same mediocre, cruddy, crappy idea, the same weak offer, the same poorly constructed marketing funnel argument. And they bring it into a different model and they think the model is what's going to carry the, the success of the of the funnel. When when the reality is that we could take one of, let's say, Agora's. Uh, marketing campaigns, and we could turn it into a webinar. We could turn it into a multi-part video sequence. We could turn it into, and all of those are going to work. They might work at different levels, but they're all going to they're all going to work. It's not the model. It's the the idea and the message and the the message construction and the quality of the offer that is presented that is the uh, the majority of your conversions. It's why when clients come to me and they say, "Well, what is the best type of marketing funnel model?" Um, there might be one that is my favorite, uh, that is my go-to, you know, type of funnel, but there, you know, it, it, I don't care what funnel you use, uh, what funnel model you use, as long as you've got the, the idea nailed, you know, marketplace sophistication nailed, you've got the marketing funnel message designed effectively to present an irrefutable, ind indisputable argument, and you've got an over the top superior, uh, um, irresistible offer, you're going to do well. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much. Todd, I'd like to thank you for being so generous with your time today. I know that you uh, really slammed this week and uh, I appreciate it. And I know the listeners appreciate it as well. And I would urge all the listeners to head over to marketingfunnelautomation.com and go through Todd's assist framework for, for setting up your funnels. So thanks, Todd. I really appreciate it. And uh, is that the best place for people to find you? Marketingfunnelautomation.com? Yeah, they can go to marketingfunnelautomation.com, check out our site. Also, we've got a cool uh, four-part video series uh, that you can find at uh, Six Figure Funnel Formula. That's S-I-X Figure 
funnelformula.com. So sixfigurefunnelformula.com. Uh, there is an offer at the end of that, but that four part video sequence is better than some paid programs on designing your, um, your first funnel. If you've yet to design a funnel, but both of those are, are great spots to, uh, to check out and, and, and learn more. And I would urge everybody to get over and check it out. Todd always uh, puts out gold out there if you're, if you're into sales funnel space. So once again, thank you very much, Todd. I really, really appreciate it. You're very welcome, my man. It was my pleasure. Wow. I'd really like to thank Todd for being so generous with his time and sharing his insider tactics and techniques with us. I'd also like to thank you, the listener, for spending your time with us. Uh, it really means a lot to be able to put out this podcast, interview these great guests, uh, and get that knowledge out there into your hands so that you can design, automate, and scale your business to the next level. If you liked it, if you enjoyed it, please share it out or head over to iTunes, give us a five-star review, and we'll read it out on a future episode. In the meantime, head over to the blog. You can find all the show notes for this episode at theactivemarketer.com forward slash Todd2. That's T-O-D-D and the number two. We'll be back next week with another Tactical 20 podcast. In the meantime, get out there and design, automate, and scale your business to the next level with sales and marketing automation. See you, everybody. Thanks for listening to the Active Marketer Podcast. You can find the show notes and all the latest marketing automation news over at theactivemarketer.com.